Do you know why you should be a buyer in this real estate market? Make sure you stay tuned and watch the video. Hi, Joe Carrig with the Carrig Real Estate Team, and this is your San Ramon Valley neighborhood update for the week of August 8th. You know, I know that headline was kind of grabbing because all the buyers are waiting now, and I'm gonna show you in the slides as we go through why you should be a buyer in this market and why we expect prices maybe to continue to creep up a little bit. You know, we went through a period a couple months ago where we had a correction. It was like a perfect storm. Interest rates went up, at the same time at the beginning of summer where we saw a lot more inventory hit the market. Plus prices were kind of nuts. So we were ready for a correction of anywhere from five to 20%, depending on Alamo, Danville, or San Ramon Valley, any place. And so we're gonna show you why things now in the last six weeks have settled down and why we've actually seen a little bit of a turn in the market as we're getting towards the end of the summer and less people now are putting their home on the market, but just as many people are purchasing. So let's take a look at the first slide. First off, look at the interest rates. You know, people talk about 5%. Oh my God, they're so high because before they were 25 to 3.5%. But we're not going to see that again, or at least not till we try to work out of the recession. Because remember we talked about a couple weeks ago, what the government does is when they have out of, you know, when the inflation is going nuts and we're going into a recession, they raise the interest rates up to push us into a recession to slow down the market. So what's gonna happen in a couple years, because number one, to be a buyer in this market, make sure, go out and get your adjustable rate loan. Five year fix, seven year fix, 10 year fix. People are so afraid because they're so used to getting into the 30 year fix when rates are three and a half. Now, instead of paying five and a half, you can pay in the fours by getting an adjustable rate mortgage. And that's gonna be okay because What's going to happen and what happens traditionally is the government, as they want to now work us out of the recession they're putting us into right now, they'll lower the rates back down. There'll be plenty enough opportunity to refinance down the line. But look at our first slide. You'll see current rates are just about 5%, which is pretty, when you go back the last five decades, it's so low compared to what it was. My first home I purchased, the interest rates were 18%. When we were in my first recession, I sold you know, through 45 years ago. So, but what happened is as we got out of that recession and every recession that we have, the interest rates have gone down and down and down. So don't be afraid of getting an adjustable rate mortgage and understand that 5%, don't wait for them to go down right now because they're not going to. If anything, they might creep up a little bit more, but 5% is a, is a new normal. It's like gas prices. You know, we see it go from five and a half to five dollars a gallon. And we understand, we're going, God, what a good price. Well, that's our new normal now. We're not going to see three dollar a gallon gas. You're not going to see 3% interest rate anytime soon. So grab an adjustable rate and go ahead and move forward knowing that the rate is historically still low. And we talked about in the recession, look at what happened in the last six recessions. Look what happened to the interest rates, 16% to 11, 18 to 13, 11 to 8, 7 to 6, 6 to 4, and then the latest one during the COVID recession, 3.8 to 2.8. So that's what happens as we get into a recession and then to get out of the recession, the Federal Reserve will lower the index rate that they loan the banks and hence the mortgage rates normally follow. So again, don't be afraid of getting an adjustable rate mortgage it is a great time to buy because you have a lot of inventory out there. See what happens, people go, well, I'm gonna wait a couple months and maybe prices will go down a little bit more. We don't, maybe they will go down a little bit more, but if interest rates go up a quarter percent, you'll eat up all that, that higher price that you might pay now. Plus what happens right now, there's a lot of inventory on the market. When you get to October, November, and people quit putting their home on the market, it's almost like a sales rack in the store that yeah, the prices might be a little bit better, but basically you just have all the stuff that no one else wanted to buy left over. So again, now is a perfect time. The interest rates have settled down. Again, you can refinance down the line. There's a lot of inventory to choose from, which means you're not getting the multiple offers. Things are actually selling at asking price or less than asking. And if you're worried about the recession, look at this next graph. As we've talked about before, four of the last six recessions, prices have actually gone up and in 1991, they basically stayed about the same. So out of the last six recessions, prices have only gone down once, and that was during the Great Recession of 2008. And the reason real estate prices 
you know, went down so much is because real estate drove us into that recession. There were two million new home inventories on the market at the time. Two million homes out there that were ready to buy. Right now, in the last 14 years, the builders have built six million homes less than they normally would have built. And that's why when you go try to buy a new home because of supply chain and lack of inventory, you're waiting a year to a year and a half to be able to get that home. So again, the recession doesn't mean real estate prices are going down. As you see here, there's been a pickup in the in inventory that we've seen recently, but it's not from a big increase in new, new listings, but rather a slowdown in the pace of sales. This is what I talked about. It's not like, oh my God, all these new homes are hitting the market. But no, naturally, as there's less people buying, the inventory is gonna look like it's going up, and really there's not more inventory than there normally would be. There's just less, less pending sales. Look at the month's inventory of homes for sale. At the very lowest, it was about one and a half, you know, one and a half months. And now it's like two and a half months. So again, remember anything less than six months, they consider a seller's market. So even the way the market is right now, if I took a three year vacation and I came back in the market and I looked at actives and pendings and sold properties right now, I would tell you that it's a seller's market because we really are in a seller's market comparatively to where we've been historically. You know, nationally, there's 500,000 homes on the market and people go, wow, look at all the homes because four or five months ago there was, a, there was 150,000. There were three times as many. But yet in a normal market, there'd be 1.2 million homes on the market. So we're really less than half. I used the example before of Blackhawk that we saw a lot of homes in. And in Blackhawk during the 2008 market, there were 200 homes on the market. Any time since that time that we got below 50 homes on the market, we would actually say, geez, there's no inventory on the market. In actuality, you know, it went all the way down to five homes on the market, and now there's like 20 homes on the market. And we go, oh my God, look at all the inventory, but we're really less than half what we would consider a lack of inventory comparatively when there were 50 homes on the market. So again, you know, we, we're looking at, you know, basically the funnel of just the last two years, but when you widen it out and you look at over the last five or 10 years, you know, we are still in a very hot seller's market. So when you look at the existing home sales, they expect there'd be about five and a half million. And when you look at this chart, you'll see 2021 was nuts. But when you look at 2017, 18, 19, and 20, we're about on par except for 2021 with a number of actual sales that will end up happening this year. You know, I've used this example before about um, what's happened with the real estate market. It's like driving your car and going around a corner at 60 miles an hour and you're in a 35 mile an hour zone and then three blocks ahead you see a cop car. Well, you don't slam on your brakes. What happens is basically you decelerate and that's what we're seeing with the market. We saw a correction, we saw the market decelerate a little bit. Existing home price performances, you'll basically see December to December, you know, as a forecast, what's going to happen through 2023, 4, 5, and 6. And they expect prices to continue to go up. And that's what we see because remember, real estate is still the best hedge against inflation. And that's the one thing that they're trying to slow down, but they're not going to stop because they really haven't learned how to not print money in Washington. So the more money they print, Inflation will go nuts. Real estate has always been and will always be the best hedge against inflation because as prices go up, your real estate goes up. So single family housing units completed. This is what I talked about before. The last 14 years, every year they built three to four, 500,000 homes less than they normally would have. They say nationwide we're short seven million homes. Well, six million of them were the ones that weren't built the last 14 years that normally since 1970 on average would have been built. So we have a situation not like 2008 where there were two million new homes just sitting there. We actually don't have any inventory on the market as far as new homes. And then when you look at, so you look at supply, there's no supply. Now, what's the other side of that? Look at the demand. Now that interest rates have kind of settled down a little bit, the millennials are in, the, which are, were the biggest buyer, you know, uh, segment ever even bigger than baby boomers, boomers, they are at the peak of their buying season right now. So supply is low and demand is still high. We went through a little correction, but that's why prices are gonna continue to go up. 
you know, experts don't believe the market's in a bubble or a crash is in the cards. Like during the Great Recession, the nation is still suffering from a housing shortage that has reached crisis proportions at a time when many millennials are reaching the age when they start to consider home ownership. And that's likely to keep prices high. That's from Realtor.com. So let's look at the graphs for this week, and you'll see exactly what I, I meant. You know, when we started this, you know, back three or four months ago, you know, pending sales were here and active sales were here. So what we saw over that four or five week period during the correction, we saw actives go here and pendings go here, completely inverted. But now what we've seen the last six weeks, we've basically seen everything stay pretty steady. And then what happened last week, as we get into August and the end of the summer where less people are putting their home on the market, take a look at this. San Ramon, pending sales are up, active properties are down now. So what we've seen is a correction, then a stabilization. Now we're actually starting to see the market back a little bit where now there's more pendings than there are active properties. Same thing in Danville. You see active properties down a little bit, pending properties up a little bit. Blackhawk, Blackhawk active properties down. Look at that, how far Blackhawk properties have gone down as far as actives and look how much the pendings have gone up. Then you have Alamo. Alamo now, the active properties have gone up a little bit, but again, the pendings have stayed pretty st steady. So when you look at the last six weeks, you know, in all the market, it's pretty stable, and, but you're starting to see stuff like in Dublin, active properties down, pending properties are up. Because what's happening now, smart buyers are sitting there going, okay, interest rates have kind of stabilized, the markets have stabilized, I'm gonna jump in and take the opportunity to have homes to choose from where I can buy at asking or less than asking. When you look at this, the sold price, the list price percentage, you have a situation where now everything, this is the first week where everything is below 100% of asking. You know, 97, 99, 95, 99, 98% of asking. But honestly, these numbers, if they were realistic, would be more like 90%, 85 to 90%. Because we're seeing anywhere from 10 to 20 price reductions a day in the San Ramon Valley. So if a home was listed at $2 million and it basically they reduced it down 1.8 and then it sold for 1.8, well, it's going to show it, it sold 100% of asking, but in reality, it really only sold around 90% of asking. So if you were able to factor, factor in that, these numbers would be a lot lower. So again, you as a buyer, market has stabilized, there's inventory, interest rates have stabilized, and you have some homes to choose from. Comparatively, if you wait, what are you gonna get if you wait? Okay, prices maybe go down a little bit, they might even go up a little bit. We're starting to see that shift, and now you're gonna be paying the same or maybe a little bit higher interest rate, and you're gonna have less homes to choose from, which means obviously supply and demand is gonna be a little bit more out of whack again. Remember, as we get into January, February, March, the reason that market is always the hottest market is because no one's putting their home on the market during November and December. So the supply and demand is definitely out of whack during the end of the year. So that's why it's such a great time to be a buyer in this market. Um, for more information, if you want to talk about you know, purchasing or even from a selling basis, because we still say as a seller, if you're planning on making that move in the next couple years, it's not a bad idea to have that conversation now because again, Prices can go up a little bit, they can go down a little bit, they can stay about the same, but the bottom line is, is no one's expecting prices to hike way up. So if you are a seller, at least have that conversation with someone now, does it make sense to sell now since I'm thinking about doing it in the next year or two anyway. And if you're a buyer, you wanna be in this market, give us a call and we can sit down and we can map out a plan for you. Again, Joe Carrig with the Carrig Real Estate Team, you can reach me at 925 487 6838 or drop me an email joe at caregteam.com or visit our website to take a look at all of our listings www.caregteam.com have a great day and we'll see you next week